Alrighty. Let's make sure. Let's make sure. Refresh. And boy, am I rusty. So let's uh, let's let's do this. Let's hit the comma key and let's move this down. And you know what? Let's get some. Oh, uh, you know what? I could just use this. Uh, do I have a head anywhere in here? You know, I'm gonna use this guy. Good enough. All right, so uh, a couple different things you could do. You could start with the comma key. You can go into the tool menu and you could go into like the female head, the demo head, all sorts of head options in here. You also have projects in here. And if you wanna play around with the head planes, you can go in here to head planes. Hey, what's up, Ivan? Uh, thanks for showing up. We're gonna do a little bit uh, of exploration because boy, I am rusty. So uh, we could start with the female head, 128, and then you've got the, the head zones uh, that you can start sculpting on. Uh, if you want to start from scratch, we can do that too. So we can go ahead and just start with like a uh, sphere here, and we can go to make poly mesh 3D, hold down control shift, we're going to clip curve, turn on X symmetry here. And um, you know, I go, always go Z forward, Y up. However, if you remember from ZBrush 2020, uh, we could go into not our Z plugin, but our preferences. And there is a cam view now, so we can turn our cam view on. And of course you can cycle through these and you can kind of just have that kind of hanging out so you know which way you're facing. Um, but we don't need that. So we know we're going this way, so we're gonna go ahead and turn this into a head. Now, of course you can just, um, let's go ahead and turn off the line cursor service. You can just start sculpting a head. It's, it's about just like that and you're good to go. Uh, if you want to get fancier, uh, you could append a bunch of cylinders and stuff like that. But I think that this will this will get us where we're where we're headed. So we have standard brush here. We got Z add turned on. I'm going to crank that Z add up just a little bit. And I'm also going to go into my stroke here. I'm going to say lazy mouse, uh, crank the lazy radius up so we can get a nice smooth stroke. And then I'm going to tap L to turn that off. So if I need it, uh, I can get it, but I don't really need it right now. So about halfway down, uh, top of the head, bottom of the chin uh, is going to be about our eye line right through here. So let's go ahead and carve out a little space for our eyes here. And also let's go ahead and Dynamesh this. So I'm going to go ahead and just hit Dynamesh. It's going to be under Geometry, Dynamesh. And uh, eh, that'll, that'll work for now. Uh, and then now we get to worry about, uh, we got, they got the front of the face. Now I need to worry about the profile. So here we're going to have uh, if you're doing a, like a male, you may have a little bit more of a pronounced brow ridge and then the skull will kind of go back. Or if you're doing a female, you can kind of bump this out and then you can diminish these brow ridges just a bit. Holding down shift to smooth. My smooth, it's gonna be a little bit different than your default because I have uh, smooth brush modifiers. I have it automatically set the weighted smooth mode of one, which makes it smooth stronger. You can find that in your uh, comma key in your brush palette if you want or you can just set the weighted smooth mode. Uh, and then this will get us uh, the side of the head. And then we got the front of the head, the back of the head, halfway down through here is going to be uh, kind of where the jawline starts and also where the ear goes. Now the ear is gonna be the brow line, which is gonna be above your eyes. So here's your eye line, here's your brow line, here's your hair line, brow line, nose line, chin line, uh, all, all about in here. And then about here is gonna be your mouth line. So we've got our proportions generally set up. Um, if you do want to go ahead and use uh, like an insert mesh brush, we can do that. You can just grab a sphere and just pop that in there. And then, um, although, you know, maybe for the planes of the face, you want to do something more like a cube. So we can go through here and we can say, all right, you are a nose. And of course, you go through here and you just kind of move these uh, polygons around to get what you're looking for. So again, if we did have a uh, pronounced brow ridge like uh, Henry Cavill style uh, brow ridge, we could go through here and we could say, bam, he's, he's got a serious brow ridge. Um, you know, and then it goes back to the eyeball here. And we're always looking for that draft of the face as well. That kind of, you know, as your face goes from the front to the back, uh, it's kind of wrapping around the underlying skull here. So, uh, and then of course we have Dynamesh turned on, so we can control drag. Oh, did we turn Dynamesh on? Now we have Dynamesh turned on. So we can go through here and now we can just start smoothing. I'm going to drop this resolution down just a tiny, tiny, tiny bit. So drop it down, not up. Uh, oh, there we go. And uh, we got the face going and then we got the lips and we got the filtrum in here. And of course, you know, always feel free to go through and move your proportions around and kind of play around with how your face is going to end up looking. 
all that good stuff. And uh, we got our cheekbones here. It's going to kind of go from this direction uh, here. And again, we were talking about the jawline earlier. Oh, and the uh, ear line as well. So we got the brow line straight back, and we got the nose line straight back. Our ear will fit somewhere in here, kind of at an angle. So we'll say angle is back. Um, if we want an easier start, uh, it's not difficult to model ear, but just in case you needed it, there are body parts. You can just grab and grab an ear. Let's go to the other side. You just grab an ear from here. And you can go ahead and just, this can be your start. Of course, you can just mask, uh, mask that out and do what you need to do there. But generally speaking, that's the shape of the ear you're going to end up looking for. Uh, let's go ahead and move this around just a tiny bit. And we need a neck here. So we'll go ahead and say, um, you know, we'll do a cylinder 32 since we're not doing hard surface modeling just yet. Although we can if you all want. Uh, we can put a neck in here. So we got, uh, you know, the cranium. It goes back to the neck. And that's going to go forward to a chest here. So we kind of elongate this out. Ta-da. And then uh, we kind of got a chest going. Let's go ahead and reset this here so we can scale that out a bit. And uh, generally speaking, we could say this is our rib cage here. Good enough. Uh, and, you know, we can go ahead and correct this to put in a few shoulders in here and get the indication of where our, our chest is going to be and where our traps are going to be. And we can actually just go through here and say, okay, you know what? There's our traps. There's our neck. Here's our head. And it's all dynamesh. We can just control drag. I'm going to go ahead and do a deformation unify just to put them right in the middle of the scene. And again, we're actually dropping that resolution. This one, we're dropping it rather severely. So let's set this back to 128. And then I'll hit Unify, because we're making it smaller, so it's going to DynaMesh a little bit harsher. There we go, something like that. And we've got a head going. So we've started uh, a character. And I'm going to drop my smooth intensity down just a bit, because again, we do have smooth stronger turned on. Um, there we go. And we've got the basis of something. Of course, it doesn't have to, I mean, this is kind of uh, just shapes and forms and stuff. So it can still very much be whatever you want. You can um, go through here and you can kind of play around with the type of character you're making. Maybe you want it to, you know, be a very gaunt figure or you can go through here with your inflate and you can go, you know what? Now he's uh, a little heavier and maybe you would diminish chin. Um, or maybe play around with <laughs> whatever you're looking for. Hey, Dodruku, thanks for showing up. Um, we're just kind of playing around. We're having a little bit of fun. Uh, this isn't too terrible. Let's let's go with this. So, uh, and of course, if you want to, you can you can always go back through your history. You can be like, you know what, I was liking more of this, or I liking more of this. Uh, and you can also just duplicate this off. So if you duplicate this off, that'll store this one here and then we can go back to our kind of our base here and then maybe we want to play around with one that is uh, you know maybe this one has a little bit of tooth loss here and getting a little old cartilage starting to sag a bit and um, we can start with some sort of a bald head in here there we go. And you know what? We can also thin this out a bit. Something like that. And we'll go ahead and duplicate this off. And one more. Um, you know what? Let's go. Let's go. It's fine. Let's go in here and we'll grab this. Yeah, we'll go ahead and scale this up. Now, if I scale it up, it's going to go away and towards that midline here. We're going to turn on LSIM. It's going to be local symmetry. And um, we'll kind of play around with this a bit. And you know what? Let's also grab this here. Just holding down Alt and kind of resetting. So I'm going to raise up that resolution just a bit. Uh, I wanted, when I'm doing organic stuff, I'll tend to keep it as low as possible. 
but not so low that it's difficult to dial in just basic features. So uh, something this will be fine. And then um, I don't know what else can we do around it. Make sure this is we have our tooth cylinder here. We want to keep that nice and round. And again, you know that draft from the front to the back and the side. So in here we are going to have, you know, we talked about our eye line. So our eye line will be through here and then through the middle of this eye line is going to go to about the corners of the mouth. Uh, and we are playing around with the proportions of the face, so maybe it's not lining up exactly, you know, halfway down and blah, blah, blah. Those are just guidelines. Um, and you know what? Let's do a, we can like do kind of a diminished uh, cranium on this one if we want to and have a little bit of fun with that. So we already, we've got, you know, three basic variants in here um, that we go through and play with. Uh, hey, Proletarian X, thanks for showing up. Uh, good to be back. It's been a while. I always say I'm going to stream more and then I never do. But uh, we'll get something fun done today. So we got, we'll turn this off and then uh, we can turn solo on. And then as we go through here, we can just kind of click and see if anything's kind of jumping out at us. Um, this one seems fine. Uh, this one actually kind of reminds me. I'm going to go ahead and launch up Quadro Reference Viewer. I'm going to pull in some reference here. I'm going to say add local image. Artists, um, I like a good shell. Uh, this one here, Goliath head maybe, and these are all, you know what, I want individual images. So I'm just gonna scroll through here. He's got some really interesting uh, kind of gaunt old heads here that are um, just good to have up and kind of, ooh, that's a really, that's a cool one. These are neat. This. Um, I suppose that's not Herman Munster, but uh, one of those types here. And I'll go ahead and say open. And now I can just have these just kind of floating around and I can just be eyeballing them and see if there's anything interesting that kind of jumps out at me through here. And also uh, keeps, me, keeps me a bit honest. So, um, you know, I can play around and do some fun stuff but I can always have some reference up that'll kind of keep me, because again, I don't, I don't do this much anymore. So the ability to kind of, you know, have stuff up and also you can just have basic head reference up. So do a Google search for human head and uh, <laughs> that, that should suffice. Um, but I like to have something a little bit more interesting up if I can. So we're going to go through here, and we'll just go through, and we'll start cutting in the features of the face here. And so again, we got the cheat. Now this ear is way up and out there, uh, which I suppose is all right. We'll go ahead and keep this elongated, and we'll go ahead and tuck this in here. And this is getting a little out of control. So we can start making some minor corrections here. So this is going to come through, and it's going to curve inwards, and then this is going to pop out here. And we'll go ahead and use our clay brush to start building this up. Um, you can use, uh, for softer things, or for things that aren't like muscle buildup, I'll just use the clay brush, but you can use the um, clay buildup or clay tubes. Uh, I'm going to drop the Z intensity down just a bit, and that focal shift I'll put up towards zero. So it gives us, uh, it's not quite so uh, intensely stuttery. Uh, we'll go through here, and um, I'm going to use my Damien standard. You can use your standard with, um, with the high intensity if you want to, but I'm going to use Damien Standard just to kind of cut in our features here. So you have your, uh, you know what, let's do this. This will be fun. Load in our zygote body here. Uh, we don't need your nervous system or your guts. We'll go ahead and pop those out. Or your skin, but we do need your beautiful muscles. So we have here our uh, sternomastoid or sternocleomastoid. Uh, it's going to go from that little bump on the back of your skull all the way to your um, clavicle here. And then you're going to have a platysma uh, over that. We'll go ahead and ignore that for now. And then you've got your traps over here. And then you've got your uh, deltoid. So all of this stuff will just be basically blocking out. So we'll go ahead and say you, 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 you. Uh, and then you got your hyoid bone up here and stuff like that, but we'll just kind of keep an eyeball on that. But this is basically what we're essentially what we're blocking out. And then you're going to have in your excuse me, um, your scapula back here, your infraspinatus, your teres major, and your teres minor. Going to be some small muscles here, and then I guess we'll talk about a little bit of the lats and then a little bit of the serratus anterior. 
through here, and then maybe a little bit of the top part of the nemabs, and then your obliques that kind of tuck in there. So all these muscles here, we'll, we'll go through and block out really quickly. So again, like I said, you're going to have a little bump on your skull here. You also have a little occipital protuberance back here where your traps are going to go. And then down the middle here, you're going to have, and I, I, used to, I used to teach anatomy. It's been a while. And uh, again, I'm a little out of, um, out of practice here, but we'll see. We'll see how it goes. So in the back here, you're going to have uh, kind of a divot where all the muscles are going to kind of fold in, and then you're going to have a spine here, and then you're going to have, I mean, this is a pretty severe divot, but you can always go back in here, and you can start putting in your, your landmarky bones. So this is going to be your C7, and then, you know, you got your vertebrae going this way, and then you've got your, um, so here's your, your vertebrae is going to go around through here. So here's going to be your neck, and then you're going to have the vertebrae that goes around, and it's pretty rigid since it's going to go around your, um, rib cage, and then you got your lumbar vertebrae, which is we go B S H for our snake hook brush, and let's go ahead and turn on Sculptures Pro so we can go yank, and uh, we can just pull that back through and start getting some geometry, and you can see, um, you know, got your lumbar, and then your cervical, and then your thoracic, and then your um, your little uh, <laughs> sacrum. Uh, in your pelvis area there. Uh, you know, still thinking about proportions here. We don't have to model the whole body. I wasn't intending to do any more than just the bust, but we can play around with this a little bit. So uh, let's go in here. Let's hit W, and we're going to say for you, you are going to hit Y so we can toggle on, um, oh, what's it called? The transpose line. Uh, this is always a fun one. Uh, recently I had a YouTube comment that was like, why in the world would you ever use a transpose line? Uh, well, this is a good reason. So if you go in here, it's great for measuring uh, in ZBrush. As, among other things, you can do some cool transpose modeling with it. Um, but if we go in here to, um, oh yeah, let me, oh, let me link you to this. It's just zygotebody.com. Um, there we go. Sorry about that. Um, cool, I'll check that out. Very cool. And you know what? We'll do a little bit of this too, you know, trying to go through here and uh, basically, you know, you got a good block out in here. We're going to do this exact same process. Looks like you use a little bit of clay tubes, a little bit of clay buildup, and then uh, we'll go through and we'll detail it up. Maybe not to this level, but you know what? Now that I see this, we'll actually go through and, uh, you know, we'll certainly do this, but we'll also certainly do a little bit of fiber mesh. I think that'll be fun. Uh, but here in Z plugin, we can go over here to transpose master and we can do. Um, no, we can't. We're going to go in here to preferences. We're not transpose mastering this, but we are going to do preferences, transpose units, and let's remember how to do this. So we're going to say this is one unit. It's going to be basically our head length. Now he's going to be very kind of a stretched and elongated. So he's his. This is going to elongate his whole body if I stick with um, this head measurement. But I think that'll be fine. We can make him a little elongated. So we're going to go from the chin to the top of the head. We're going to say it's going to be one unit, and we're going to set the unit um, unit scale calibration distance is going to be one. Enter unit scale set units is going to be a head unit, and then we're going to say four minor ticks, and then one major tick, um, and then the calibration distance again is one. So now, if I go through here, you're going to see bottom of the chin to the top of the head is one unit, and then in here you have one, two, three, four, so that's gonna divide it into fourths, so at least you have a midpoint and then two points around that. So, hold on just a second, let me go to my, here we go. So now we have heads, so we can kinda, that's, this could kinda keep us honest when we are going and doing proportion work. So if I go through here, we can just, whoa, <laughs> I'm just grabbing these outside rings, not the inside rings. And so from here we have one, two, three, four heads is going to be kind of the crotch area, and then one, two, three, four heads to the bottom of the feet. Uh, now that's a heroic proportions, um, so it's not seven and a half heads, um, but at least that'll kind of get us uh, where we're looking. Now uh, you can continue just using Sculptures Pro and just dragging out those little shapes like like we did there, um, but also. Um, 
you know, you could use insert mesh brushes and you could block out like a base body. In fact, we've done that. Uh, or on my Rstation page, or if you go to Rstation Learning, now that I think about it, uh, I always forget I did this, you can go in here to the Intro to ZBrush series, and there's a whole series. So if you're part of the whole Rstation um, crew, you can go through there and you can have a little bit of fun uh, just going through the ZBrush basics. Um, I also do have on my YouTube channel if you go in here to playlists, there's a kind of a, U, a kind of a new intro to ZBrush ideation, ZBrush for ideation updated for 2020. Here's a full playlist on just kind of getting started. So that's another kind of a getting started guide right in there. Uh, can you give me some tips to work in this sector 3D? Uh, I have, speaking of ArtStation, just for that, I mean, not really. Um, it's kind of a broad question. I don't know that I'd have the, the best answer for you, but I do have, uh, do I need a college degree? Motivation, inspiration, 2D versus 3D. It's not versus, it's just 2D and 3D working together in harmony, and then how to break into the games industry. So if any of these seem uh, interesting to you, you can certainly um, check out my blog. And again, I don't really answer any questions or I don't have any good answers for any of that. Um, but if you want my nearly worthless opinion, um, you can check that out. So to go ahead and stretch this body along here, so basically this body, I'm just looking to hit that point here. So I'm going to hit, uh, well, I'm going to go ahead and mask out because the head and the neck, I think, are pretty solid. But this body needs to be elongated a bit. So we're just going to hold the shift. We're just going to pull that down so that now uh, we're going to hit that uh, midpoint here. Um, so now we got one head down, two heads down is going to be our chest line, three heads down is going to be kind of our belly button, the top of the pelvis, four heads down is going to be the bottom of the pelvis, which again, that sacrum is going to hit, and then one, two, three, four. Um, although when we're moving, oh no, that's right. So there we go. Now we've got uh, a little bit better proportions for him, although I do believe, let's go ahead and turn off Sculptures Pro here, that probably that neck got a little bit too stretchy for my taste. Like, I want him to have a long neck, but not like crazy. So we'll go ahead and put the traps and that shoulders back in. Um, so yeah, we got start of our, our long boy. So we'll go ahead, you know what, we'll kind of leave him cadaverous a little bit. I think that might be fun. We can always change that, but for now, we'll stick with this. We'll stick with the plan. So again, like we were saying, we can go in here to clay tubes or clay buildup, and we can start using that to kind of block in our muscles too. So what I'll use is I'll use like clay tubes or clay buildup, again, with the focal shift turned down to zero, maybe the intensity turned down just a bit, although you'll have to play around with that, see what works for you. Um, and we can kind of use this, whoa, to kind of go through here. And, uh, or you can just use the clay brush, or you can just use the standard brush. I'm not going to tell you how to work. Here's our C7, and then our trapezius is going to go around that and kind of go through here and twist and go down the middle of the body like so. Uh, if you want more, if you want to kind of sketch this instead, again, Damien standard, oops, uh, Damien standard uh, to go through here and you'd be okay, here's my uh, one head down. Now nose the chin here, this is again, I'm, these distances are getting stretchy, uh, but you know, we're just having a little bit of fun. So nose the chin here to that um, sternal notch right here, and then you're gonna have your sternum through here, and that's gonna be your chest line. So again, uh, one head down, two heads down is gonna be your chest line here, and this is where your, about where your pecs are gonna go. And then this is going to go um, three parts to your pecs. Uh, let's see if Psycho Body has anything on that. Not really, but uh, about halfway down your clavicle-ish, and then down your sternum, and then also uh, a little attachment on the portion of your rib cage there, and that's actually gonna go into if we turn off all these, we can actually go through and we can do a little bit of investigation. So we can click on this and then we can say, you know what, get rid of all the other muscles. And you're going to see uh, it's about just, just below the top ball of the humerus there. Um, you're going to have maybe a three finger, four finger, eh, three finger width. Um, where it attaches, and then it's also going to loop over. So these top muscles are going to go to the bottom, and then these bottom strands are going to go up here. So, and if you want to kind of visualize that, we can go, you know what, let's knock this back a little bit. And then in here, we can say, give me a sphere. And then let's hit Y so we can go back to the gizmo. And then um, let's do a quick, uh, under your split menu, under subtool split, we're going to say split mass points. 
and then through here we can say you are now a bone. So you are going to be bonafide. So we're going to say W and then control tap this and then we're going to control drag this out just ramp. And you could use the modeler for that, but but why? Why would we do that when we can simply just control drag out? So now here is our humerus. Now um, the arm is going to be basically here and then when you put your arms down at your side at your your uh, medial epicondyle of your humerus is going to kind of touch the bottom of your rib cage here, so that's about right. Uh, if you want to visualize that, you can just drop another cylinder in here. And then this humerus is a bit much, right? So let's do a quick group by normals. Let's drop that max angle down. There we go. So we can get some polygroups going, and then we'll do a quick geometry modified topology mirror and weld. And then now we can use the modeler Q mesh, polygroup ball, hover over a face, hold down shift. It's going to pull along there, and we can thin that out just a bit. Um, now that we have that, we are talking about the epicondyle. So here's the lateral and the medial uh, here, and you can just go and then and then and that can be our indication of that that stuff. So anyway, now we we're talking about uh, putting muscles on here. You can actually make a muscle brush if you're so inclined. But that's a bit much. We're just having fun. That that starts getting. Um, uh, a little bit into stuff that isn't really necessarily that useful just yet. So again, clay brush or clay buildup, you can start knocking this back because our traps don't fill in this space here. We've got our clavicle, and again, just like in the face, we're looking for drafts. We're going to go here to the neck and then back here. Uh, so this is going to be your shoulder girdle, and so you have your clavicle that comes back, and then you have your scapula, which has an acromion process. We'll go back to our reference here. And you're going to see, here's our scapula. You've got this big blade here, and then you've got the um, the arm that kind of comes out, and then you're going to have your chromium process. You've got a coracoid process in here, too, that attaches to some armpit muscles that we'll get to in a second. Um, but basically what we're looking for is this landmark right here. And then I wish I could, like, tilt down so you can see this a little bit better. But um, So here's the clavicle, and then here's your shoulder girdle, and then... All of this kind of makes up how you can kind of move stuff around, and those are our bony landmarks. So um, you know what? I'll just I'll just keep this up for myself. So you go through here, uh, and again you get your C7, your cervical seven spine here, and then it goes up. And so when you tilt your head down, you can kind of feel that knob at the at the base there. That's that one right here. And then uh, from here, we'll go ahead and turn our muscles back on so I can, again, it's just all about keeping myself honest. I want to lie, and uh, and more importantly, I want to learn. So I want to make sure that I'm vaguely accurate. It doesn't have to be super accurate because, again, we're having fun. Uh, but as long as you know the rules and you can kind of uh, work within the rule set, uh, you tend to be a little bit more successful and then you can kind of play around with proportions and stuff like that and have it be a little bit more of a successful endeavor than just going willy-nilly, breaking rules you didn't know existed. Um, those those tend to not be so successful. So, again, we were talking about our pecs. So we have our sternum here. And um, so I've got one head down. And then nose to chin is going to be the top of the sternal notch. And then have our chest line. The sternum is going to be about half of our rib cage. So one sternum down, two sternums down-ish. Uh, half of the rib cage here. And then we've got our um, that arm of the scapula is going to go over here. And that acromion process is going to meet that clavicle, which is going to give you kind of Cupid's bow shaped. And then you've got the head of the humerus here, which again, this humerus is very thick humerus. Um, so, you know, we could, we could temp, tamper, temper that. Q mesh polygroup ball, and then you can just hold down shift and we'll just go pull uh, along that surface normal. So uh, we have a pec. Now this pec, um, well this this arm also looks a little bit low. It's going to sit up in here, and you know what? Let's just put these arms out just a bit, because if we are going to do a kind of an A pose, we want to make sure we got plenty of room to put clothing and stuff in here. I don't necessarily need to do a T pose for like rigging or anything like that, but we can say, you know what? Let's do an A pose here. So that should work. So through here, we can go, let's go back to our Damien Standard Brush. And again, we have our clavicle here, like so. And then we've got the sternal portion of our pectoralis major. And then we've got our rib cage that's uh, sitting uh, right through here. So here's our rib cage. Um, off of this rib cage is going to be our serratus anterior. 
So this is going to be our serratus, and the serratus is going to come around here, and it's actually going to attach to the inside back of this scapula. So again, go through here, there's our serratus anterior, and if we go through here and we go get rid of the muscles, you can see uh, all along here, and these are going to be a little bit more uh, straight, and then your obliques are going to go down from this angle. So from your rib cage to the back inside of your scapula is where those are going to hang out. So, and you, again, this is, you don't have to get everything perfect, you just need indications and you need direction. So these, and these are also going to be a little bit more uh, bulbous, and you're not going to see these on very lean, lean people, you're not going to see a whole lot of serratus anteriors hanging out. Um, but then from the obliques, those are going to kind of come down in this direction. Maybe you would call it an oblique direction. And then those are kind of feather, or, you know, these, these fingers here will interlock with your, your, uh, your stuff, you know, your stuff. And then on the rib cage here, uh, so I think on males, the rib cage tends to kind of be more of a, like a 45 degree angle. And then on females, it can kind of be a little bit of a, a little shallower angle there. Don't quote me on that. Again, it's been a while, but something like that. So we can get a little bit more of an arch here. Um, and that's probably vaguely correct. So uh, you can also go through here if you if you feel like this pec separation is a little much, go through here with your pinch brush and just pinch those things together. Now we were talking about um, the pec. So uh, here's the ball of the pec. And again, this is, I'm gonna go ahead and smooth that out. Smooth, drop that intensity down. It's actually a little bit more like that. And then uh, we can actually go through and we can pinch this if we want to. All sorts of useful tricks with the pinch brush. So we're going to go through here and I'm going to use my Move Accu, which is basically the move brush with your preferences gone. C plugin gone. Brush docked. Um, d -d 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 curve Accu. Um, and I have a brush saved with that setting. So we can go through here and we can just kind of pull this pec muscle out. Now, when we were talking earlier, and how did Dynamesh get turned off? So uh, we got this, and then again, we have, uh, here's our rib cage. So we have a little bit of this pec kind of sticking on that rib cage, and a little bit of this pec kind of sticking along your um, sternum, and then your clavicle here. And then these from the clavicle portion are gonna go to the bottom here. And then it's gonna kind of, uh, go to the sternum portion, which is going to go and start going up, and these are going to go to the top, and then the very bottom is going to go to the very top, so they're going to kind of twist over each other. So if you're looking for which way your striations of your pec are going, that's just a decent indication of how that's going to work. Now, of course, all of this is going to be covered up by your deltoid. So we'll go ahead and say split mass points, pull this in here. And sometimes if I'm playing it safe, I'll do a quick save, whoops, um, which if that is a nine, and then I can just go through here on my quick saves and just reload. Uh, oh boy, I got a bunch of, so here's my latest. And we'll just reload it from the quick save. And I'll do that whenever I'm popping a lot of sub tools off, I'll go through and just um, do a quick save and reload. Um, hey, John Yu, cool, awesome. Um, yeah, <laughs> again, it's been a while, but I, I, I remember enough anatomy to get by this morning, maybe. Uh, is there a way to save alphas for loading on startup? For sure. Same thing with brushes. So if you want to load up alphas and brushes on startup, just go to your ZBrush 2020 folder. So if you want to go into the comma key to your light box, that's going to be under Z alphas or Z brushes. And that's going to be like, oh, I just want to grab an alpha real quick. You go in here and you just grab an alpha. Uh, and you can organize them by folder because when you go into Z alphas, for example, it's all organized by folders however you want. However, if you want to do startup, you simply go to Z startup um, and then you can go into, where is that? Alphas. And then if you load them in here, these are going to be um, these will show up at start and alpha. Same thing with brushes. Z startup brushes, brush presets is what it's called. Um, anything you put in here will start up with ZBrush, and then you can assign hotkeys to them. If you really want to get crazier, you can actually change the default, and that's going to be under Z data. So if you go under Z data, 
alphas. These are the default alphas that come into ZBrush. If you don't need any of them, you can just delete them, although I'd be careful with that. Uh, and just like when you're doing a brush presets in this folder, these are the ones that load in to ZBrush by default. So save this off, have like a brush presets backup or copy, and then go in here and make the changes that you want and save over these brushes. And then whenever you start up ZBrush, it won't be a brush preset addendum. It'll be like my smooth brush, which has the weighted smoothness at the one by default. So all that. Uh, oh, and uh, oh, it's not working for you. That's kind of weird. That's how I would do it. Uh, I'm not sure why that wouldn't work. Yeah, and also for alphas in particular, maybe make sure that they're a depth of 16 grayscale. Um, I don't know that that makes any difference, but uh, that'll give you the best results. Um, something like that. Uh, and if I miss anything, just give me a second. Cool. Uh, how to merge two subtools without losing details. Um, you shouldn't lose anything just just by merging. Uh, now, if you're talking about merging two subtools and then dropping the resolution because you're going to dynamesh two subtools together, that would just be working on, like, if I'm going to do hands, um, I would go through here and I would add hands. And uh, split those off. <laughs> and then... Uh, you know, I would just work on these separately, and I could even dynamesh them. However, if I dynamesh them at this resolution, uh, these things might be, they might have a tendency to stick together. Um, but even with this quad geometry, I'd be fine. Work on them at a resolution separately until they get comparable to the resolution of the body. And then when I merge them and dynamesh them together, it won't make any difference at all. Um, so yeah, you shouldn't lose any detail when just by merging. Um, if you're losing detail, I'm not sure what would what would cause that necessarily, because again, you're not changing any vert positions or anything. Um, so we're going to go through here. Now our deltoid is going to be a three-pronged attack. It's going to go from the side of the clavicle here, down, about halfway down, surprisingly far down, your humerus here, and then uh, along the back of the, let's go ahead and always call back to your reference. If you don't know, look it up. So uh, along the clavicle here, and then around that acromion process, and then a pretty healthy portion of that uh, spine of the scapula. And that will be our triangle muscle or our deltoid. And of course, uh, it is, it's is—it's going to inherit since we inserted it on the, it's crank as the intensity of a bit. Since we inserted it on a mesh that had Dynamesh, it, it inherited those properties of that tool. So. So now we have uh, this overlap. So now you are going to get kind of that. Um, there's like a little, I mean, this is actually a little bit too far in maybe, but something like this. Now this is actually going to curl forward just a bit. Um, it gives us a little bit more room for the triceps in the back. And then uh, we got the arms and stuff like that. So for the arms, you know what, we can just take this and we can just inflate it. And this can be kind of our working arm. Here. So now, for example, like we were talking earlier, am I able, let's go ahead and stretch these out just a bit, um, am I able to merge two things together and not lose resolution? Well, these, this is Dynamesh Resolution 2216, this is Dynamesh Resolution 216, uh, this doesn't have any Dynamesh, however, if I take this, hold down shift, shoot it to the top, and I just do my hotkey for merge, which is subtool merge down, merge all these together, they are going to inherit all the tool properties, so I can just control drag and uh, like that. However, before I do that, I don't lose resolution on this. It just exists and I can always just go through and um, I can pop this back out again, just control shift A and split this off if I want to. Uh, or I can just control drag and dynamesh and then now I have all this dynamesh together. And then uh, clay brush or clay buildup go through here and we got our biceps and our brachio brachialis here, and then we got our triceps in the back, and this is where you can, if you want to, um, just go through here and you can just kind of use this as a muscly appendage. Um, if, if you want a little bit more leeway, not those polarized calves, we do a split mass points, and then we just do a quick zero mesh. Uh, well, let's not do a zero mesh at 5,000, let's do half adaptive size down to zero. This will give you just a very general kind of shape that'll smooth a lot nicer. So you can go through here and be okay. Triceps, 
numero uno is a scientific term, triceps numero dos. And then, um, so we go around the back here, you're going to have your long head and your lateral head, and then I thought, oh, there it is, uh, medial head. So you've got three heads here. So here's the little medial head popping out, and then um, here's the long head, and then your lateral head on this side. So, uh, but you can just indicate that with just a quick, you know, you don't have to do muscles for everything. You just go like, okay, here's my medial head. Medial apicondyle, medial head, medial towards the middle of your body. And then uh, that coracoid process we were talking about earlier, I think that's what it's called. We strip our muscles out and then we look at this little, little finger doodad hanging off the inside of your scapula here. And then we bring some of our muscles back you're going to see that attaches there, the car caracobrachialis, and that's going to be kind of a, a little armpit muscle that you can indicate uh, through here. But, you know, here's your pec, and then here's your caracobrachialis, and then your tricep a little bit forward, and all that good stuff. And then when you're ready to rock and roll, um, if, I, if I merge this down, oh, it does have um, Dynamesh because we put it on a Dynamesh mesh, and then we merged it down, so we can still merge these down and we're off to the races. And then the brachialis is actually going to go all the way through the body. So uh, it's going to go here to here, which is interesting, I suppose. So you keep moving these muscles in. We have our uh, brachialis here and it's going to go all the way through and you will see it towards the bottom underneath the bicep, kind of down through this way. So it goes all the way uh, through there. So you can kind of indicate that down here, and then of course up here, and then you got your triceps. And now you're going to have the 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 rhythm of the body is going to be um, kind of. Do I have a way to draw? Uh, you know what? I need drawing tools. Eh, eh, okay, let's go out of edit mode. Let's grab a dot stroke in this. So basically, and. <laughs> Uh, I don't need a body being drawn out. I need a simple brush. And I need it to be a dot stroke and I need it to be an alpha. There we go. Something like that. So uh, basically you're going to have kind of the rounds here. So you've got your humerus and then here's your bone in here. So you've got the nice roundness of the muscle and then you got the roundness of the muscle and then you're going to have the flatness of tendons and ligaments and then you have the pointiness of bone. So if you can kind of just interdisperse, I mean in ways that make sense, um, these kind of ideas, you know, here's a nice flat and then the roundness of the muscle takes over and then you got your um, brachial radialis and then it's going to go down to kind of a pointiness of a bone here, um, you know, kind of having these kind of mixed around and then you've got pointiness of a bone, a corner of a bone, and then you've got the roundness of a muscle. All of that stuff will kind of help your, your shapes a bit. So we'll go through here, and yeah, let's change that back to drag rect. Go in edit mode, control and declare a canvas, and turn that off off. So, okay. Now this this has all just been a kind of a technical uh, walkthrough, and it has done nothing for what kind of character we're making. You know, what, what are we trying to message with this character? What's his story? What's his, um, what makes him interesting? From a glance, what are you trying to message to your user? Um, and that's all stuff. And, you know, go back to your archetypes and your TV tropes and stuff like that. So you can be like, is he a king? Is he a jester? Is he a, um, you know, what, what, what am I trying to message here? That's probably far more important than the technical aspects. Although they, you know, they all play together nicely. Uh, I shouldn't say that. They all, they all work together to, again, message. One, one is more messaging um, functionality and feasibility, and then one is messaging. Um, you know, what, what your character is, which is super important, obviously. And I don't have answers to any of those questions. I'm just, I'm just kind of playing around. So, uh, let's say, um, I'm kind of, I kind of wanted to do for some reason, just kind of a gaunt, uh, kind of a, I don't know if he's an anti-hero or is he stylish? Is he, uh, is he funny? And this is where you can kind of go around, and I've kind of been neglecting 
his head. And you, you want to basically work on the body and the round. You don't want to spend too much time in any one area. So you can go through here. And again, you can always just play around with your proportions. Just go in here with a big old move brush and just kind of go through here and do what you need to do if you need to kind of broaden any areas out. Or you can mask and transpose or mask and gizmo around. Um, certainly feel free to do that. And we got a big hole left over here. So that scapula we were talking about earlier, uh, this is where the infraspinatus, infraspinatus teres major and teres minor. And that teres, mm, damn, you know, I used to know this stuff. Uh, there is going to be one interesting one. It's the teres um, major is actually going to go from the inside bottom all the way around to the almost the side front of that humerus. And the teres minor, um, let's see here. Terrace major, and then the terrace minor is going to be a little offshoot here, and then your infraspinatus is going to go around to the back. So that was the only, the only interesting one. I shouldn't say that. They're all interesting, but this terrace major is going to be the one that kind of does the little loop-de-loop -loop up in here. And then the infraspinatus is going to be a little bit more visible, and then the terrace major is going to be a little thing. And then your traps. Let's go ahead and kill these here. Boop. And bring all my muscles back. Uh, traps are going to sit on top of everything. And uh, let's go through here, the clay buildup. And then, yeah, right along here. So, to our, from our scapula. And then it's going to go around our scapula here. And then down and kind of cover up these to about the mid, mid back. Uh, and then, of course, you're going to have your lats. And that's your lats are going to tuck around on the inside of your um, arm, too. A lot of stuff going on in your armpit. Maybe that's why it gets so. Get so hot in there. A lot of muscles attaching and doing stuff. Uh, and then your lats are just going to go through here. You're going to actually, the lats actually get pretty thin. They're going to be thickest up here at the top. And then as they go down your body, the shape of the lats is a little bit misleading because if you look at an Ecorche model, you're going to be like, oh yeah, lats make this shape. But then if you go and look at a bodybuilder or anybody who has, um, isn't just stripped in scientific model, um, you're going to notice that you're actually going to have a bulge here from your serratus anterior. So this is going to be a bulge that goes this way because your serratus anterior is going through and attaching to the back of your scapula like we talked about earlier. So this is actually going to be a bulge this way, which the, that's the direction your lats don't go because your lats, yes, your lats are going this way, but you are going to have a bulge forcing those lats to kind of make this shape. And then you've got your obliques coming around and we'll just go ahead and skip that. Again, we're just going to keep him I mean, we got a little bit of obliques up here, and then that's going to go to your obliques that sit on top of your pelvis there. Uh, but again, let's get back to this face here. This is all fun. So, um, middle of the skull outwards. Now, we do have, like, the orbit of the skull. We can kind of pull this down, and that'll kind of be um, where the eyeballs are going to end up sitting. And we'll get to the eyeballs in a bit, but we are going to go in here to our Damien Standard Brush. So, Damien Standard Brush is good for cutting in. So, if you want to, like, cut in... Um, like the brow ridge here, and uh, go through on the side of the nose here in our labial folds, corners of the mouth here, and then chin, like so, and then uh, jawline straight down. And then you can also hold down Alt, so if you go into the Damien Standard Brush, you hold down Alt, you can actually pull out to a, a surface like this if you wanted to like an, uh, pronounce a ridge or something like that. Speaking of that, I did a bunch of that for recently. Um, there's three playlists in here. Actually, probably easier to look at in here. Uh, mechanical Skull Series. So in here, I have the hard surface. Uh, if you go and click up here, you got like 17 videos on like how to make the hard surface version of the skull. And then if you keep going, you have Substance Painter. So after it's all been game res and baked, you can go through here and you can paint it up. And then rendering and exporting to Sketchfab. Um, so we can go through here. And let me see if I can load this up here. Uh, scroll down, zoom in. There we go. So now we have... Um, so what does it hold on? Alt? Yeah, move the lights around. And so basically, this is just a quick ZBrush model. This is kind of like a ZBrush concept sketch um, that you can go through and you can put in Painter and you can put a little subsurface scattering on the teeth and put in lighting and stuff like that. And you can go through here and uh, do some emissive for the eyes and have fun with it. But basically, you start out with an organic skull. If we scroll up, oh, scroll, scroll, scroll. Um, go through here, 
sizzle video. Yeah, so you start with an organic skull, and then you just go through here, and you use stuff like the Damien Standard, and the H Polish, and Trim Dynamic, and you go through, and you just hard surface the heck out of this thing, so that eventually you arrive at, jeez, sorry, slow moving, there we go. So eventually you arrive at kind of the block out of your hard surface shape, like this. Uh, but anyway, if you're interested in that series, check out this link. Um, uh, cool, thank you, John Yu. Uh, yeah, exactly. So if you can, if you actually do want to mess around with a skeleton, it's a good point. Uh, there is in the tool menu you have uh, this Brian Kingsline anatomy model, and this is great just to kind of play around with. So if you want to just strip the bones out, um, you have a whole skeleton here. And in fact, if I want to keep myself honest. You can also play around with like, let me grab all this, Control Shift A. Um, you know, I could split this in a pendant. It might just make my life easier if I just go through here and say, you know what, brush, create insert mesh, new. And then very quickly, I can just go here and I can say, yoink, yoink. And now I've got a skull. So we'll go ahead and say split mass points and then go into transparency mode. So now you can see you know, and this is, I think, is the female skull, but close enough. Uh, landmarks are still there. You can see the kind of liberties I'm taking uh, with some of his long proportions and stuff, and the, the diminished cranium in the back we talked about, and kind of pointing out <laughs> this big knob on the top of his head here. You know, but you know, it's, it's also good just to kind of keep yourself, uh, like I said, honest and making sure that you know your teeth and you know your wrapping, you're getting that depth, that um, draft of the face there all that stuff. And you can also use this as kind of a visual element too, or if you wanted to go crazy and just be like, you know what, we're going to make Skull Man, da -da -da, Skeletor style. And you can have a little bit of fun doing that type of thing. Or if you wanted to give him like a hard surface skull face plate, uh, that's a real easy way to start. But we'll go ahead and hide that skull here. And also, you know, save often. You can hit nine on your keyboard and do a quick save while you're saving, or you can save iteratively. Just I like I don't I don't like to do a file save. I like to do a good old tool save as. Um, can you guys see that menu? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, restart ZBrush three times for it to show up. Interesting, huh? Um, cool. Yeah, 16-bit is good for alphas. Cool, cool. Uh, art station artwork. Uh, can I have some feedback? Sure. Um, don't see anything in here. Excuse me, I'll let you guys know. We have free update to ZBrush 2028.1.1, uh, which I'm on. I'm actually updated to that. And it's actually pretty easy to update. If you go to... I hope I'm. I hope this is correct. <laughs> um, there is now for a full point, or is it for a point release? Is what I'll do is I'll do the Z upgrader right here, and that does a pretty good job. And you don't have to. It doesn't blow away like your custom menus or anything like that. Um, but for full releases where it goes from like ZBrush 20 to ZBrush 21 or something like that, uh, that's where I would probably. I don't know. Sometimes they'll tell you to do a full install, but I'll leave it up to the Pixelogic wizards who do that stuff for a living. So we kind of have an indication of where our landmarks are and how things are going to work. And this gets a little bit tricky in the eyeballs. You can't just go through and sculpt it. I'm not saying uh, you shouldn't, um, but sometimes kind of putting some basic shapes in here can be helpful. So I'm going to go ahead and leave that alone for now. Um, yeah, we're doing OK. So I'm going to go back to my standard brush again. We raised that intensity up and we turned our lazy radius off so we can go through and we can just have um, a little bit more, we can attack uh, a little bit harder than just kind of being wishy-washy and um, being too soft with our decision making here. Give me a second, I need to make sure that, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, okay, sorry about that. So anyway, uh, we got our nose here and we got uh, our philtrum and then our lips. So some of this may be tricky and you know what sometimes can help? Oh, you know another thing is the bottom of this is really where this angle happens. So if you take the bottom of your, beneath the kind of the, between your lip and your chin and you go around to the side, that's where your jaw makes that angle. A lot of times, you know, just by default for some reason, I'll make the jaw like this 
you know, which is, I guess, a stylistic choice, but it's also an incorrect choice. Um, so if you're going to play around proportions, certainly do that, but within reason. Um, this is this is a little bit more where your jaw would end up. So go through here, and uh, we'll start fleshing this guy out. So he does a gaunt, and I do have some gaunt reference up from Jordu Shell. Check out his website, Shell Studio. Um, he's or his Instagram. He's he's really amazing, and I like looking at the traditional guys um, when I do just like basic head reference, just because they've solved a lot of the. Uh, why why is this shape appealing? What am I trying to emphasize? As opposed to just getting, I mean, it's good good to get. Don't don't misquote me on this. It is good to use just human reference and to use like 3DSK uh, and uh, 1024 and just do like real real human study for sure. Um, but it's also fun to kind of see how the pros go through and do their thing. Um, me not being one of them. I don't really make humans for a living. Uh, I mostly do documentation now. But, so we got uh, on the, the side of the head, we got some chewing muscles. And then you got your zygomatic arch, and then you've got uh, some jaw masseter muscles here. And then you've got, you know, kind of, we're just kind of, again, just dialing in a little bit of this face, and we can start refining a bit. Now, we are going to start running out of resolution quickly, so if I want to play around with this head separately, we can certainly just grab this head about here-ish and go ahead and split that off and then redynamesh and just... Um, but you know what? Um, I do want to raise that resolution up on the head, but the body, I want to say, I want to keep that uh, lower. So maybe I'll keep that at 216. Um, if you get these little frilly things, you can hold down Shift and you can use Sculptors Pro, and you can kind of get rid of those. And then you could do, you can just redynamesh it'll get rid of those things. Um, an alternative to that is you can just manually go through and do a geometry modified topology close holes. I like to do a quick mirror and weld, and then Control Tap here, and then you can just, um, you know what you could do? You could simply, um, you can hit Y and then E. And this is going to be transpose modeling. You can pull in a little bit of a, um, a little bit of a shelf there. But another thing you could do, now that I think about it, I might like this better. You can go through here and you can do like a masking. We're going to mask our border, invert that, and then hit Y so we can go back to Gizmo. We can just kind of pull up and maybe scale in a little bit just to kind of build in. A little bit of that, and you can actually go through here. You can do a little polish by feature to smooth those out, and then when you subdivide, you won't get any crinklies. Or if you do, they're a little bit more manageable. Um, but I'll go ahead and turn off Sculptures Pro, and we'll redynamesh. Anyway, that was probably not that useful, but just in case. So, got a clay brush, and we got an earlobe, and we got your helixes of your ear, your helixes, and your anti helixes, and your all the little parts that make up your ear, and basically. We're gonna we're gonna do this. We're gonna say this swoop, this this question mark swoop kind of goes into the head, and then you're gonna have a little knobby right through here, and then you're gonna have uh, a hole that goes way in here to your auditory meatus, and then so this is gonna kind of swoop down, and then you're gonna have this gonna kind of swoop in, and then you're gonna have a little uh, little lump through here, and then these sometimes these can be pretty flared out quite a bit. Um, that kind of depends on the person. Now, and also, what also depends on the person is if your earlobes are attached or if they're just hanging free. Um, we'll stick with hanging free for now, but feel free to do what you want. And of course, you can go through here and you can use Transpose. Uh, you can use a Move Brush. You can use Sculptors Pro. And this is going to be, uh, yeah, so this is going to be kind of a bump out and then kind of a swoop in. And again, and just go grab some reference. I got some reference up. Just again, keep myself honest. That can be the start of our ear. And we could, of course, move these things around as needed, uh, but I think that'll work. So now we do have this kind of severe uh, orbit, which is okay. I don't think that's there's anything wrong with that. Uh, but now I need to start worrying about getting these eyelids going. You can go through here with your Damien Standard, and you can just like hold down Alt. Same thing with the lips. You can go through here, hold down Alt, and start pulling out like where the lips kind of tuck into the body here. Let's go ahead and load up a little bit of Photoshop. And also, we'll do a little bit of draw over because, you know, 2D and 3D 
work together in harmony. So let's make sure I'm recording this because that screen doesn't look right. Something like that should work. Okay, so, uh, okay, so new, we'll say 1200 by 955. Brush. Now that's probably blowing your eyeballs out. Let's dumb that down just a little bit. So when we were working, we were talking, oh boy. Oh, smooth is way up. Let's just turn that off. Um, so when we were talking, and let's also do our flow at like 50. You know what, we can turn this down to 75. So we basically went through here and we sliced off uh, that side of the cranium here and then we just kind of mushed this out to the bottom and then halfway down here we also kind of scooted this cranium out to the back and then halfway down we have our jawline here. So this is the start of our face and we have the midline of our face here and we have our hairline um, halfway down. So bottom of the head here we have the eyeball here. So here's our eye line and then halfway through that cranium we kind of have that uh, brown line here. And then through here, we have our hairline, brow line, nose line, chin line. So this is where our nose line is going to end up here. And this kind of kind of come out this way. Let's go ahead and zoom in a little bit so I can get a little bit more uh, fidelity. There we go. So now uh, we have this here is going to be kind of where our orbit kind of sits. And then in here, you're going to have your eyeball. So on either side, let's go ahead and drop this opacity down because I'm already getting nasty. There we go. We'll clean this up a little bit. So going through here, again, we're going to have our brow line here. And then this is going to be on both sides of our brow line. And then your orbit is going to be a big bony thing here. And then you're going to have your eyeballs kind of sitting in your orbit like so. And then around that eyeball is going to be your uh, eyelids, obviously. And that's what's going to close around there. And your eyelids are going to have thickness and stuff. And they're going to go around your eyeball. So it's going to go, again, that draft of the face is constantly curving. So here's our nose we were talking about. So here, and then we have our mouth cylinder. So middle of the eye straight down, middle of the eye straight down. It's kind of the corners of the mouth. But again, your mouth is going to wrap around that here. And you may, may kind of look like a smile, but, you know, the corners of the mouth and then... Gonna open this mouth a little bit. Um, here's the middle, here's the philtrum. So here we have the upper lip and then tucking into that is going to be the bottom of the mouth and then there's that between the mouth and the chin here and if you take this around that's where that jaw is going to make that corner. So uh, now we have our cheekbones here. So here's a sweep of our cheekbone and that's going to go to your brow which top of the brow, bottom of the nose is our ear kind of sitting here and again we got here's lumpy and swoopy and anti-swoopy, and then ear hole, and then there you go. Now we've got an ear. Uh, the hairline is going to be through here, and it's going to kind of follow that temporal line here, and then you're going to have your sweet sideburns go here to mutton chops, like so. And then, uh, you know, this can kind of be, I don't know, maybe folded over, depending on where the part is from the other side here. And then now you've got cheekbone, uh, your labial folds here, you got a little nodes at the corner of the mouth, and then this is going to be your chin, like so, and then the neck is going to come out back because we know we've got the cranium here, and that's going to go back to the neck and then swoop forward for the chest, and then you got your lumbar, and then your sacrum, and all the stuff, and then there's your arm like so, lateral medial epicondyle, pec, so one head down, two head down, chest line, here's the pec coming over here and swooping around, and then here's the traps, and then here's the deltoid, clavicle halfway down, here's the um, tricep, bicep, brachioradialis, corner of the bone, corner of the bone, and then you're going to get, here's your and the obliques we were talking about earlier, so here's the serratus anterior, and then your obliques come down, and then it's going to kind of bulge out. On the on the male, it's going to kind of bulge out here. So you've got, um, here's your rib cage, and then here's your pelvis, a little more boxy, kind of straight up and down, and then your, on the male, it's going to kind of look like this, and then your pelvis is going to kind of bulge out over uh, that, and then here's your obliques and your chest and stuff like that. 
you got a little bit more inset uh, hips on the female. Your uh, chest is going to be a little bit narrower. These hips are going to be a little bit wider. So this is going to be a little bit of a smoother transition. So you kind of have this shape, a little more of a violin as opposed to, you know, this kind of shape here. Uh, yeah, so we got the head, basic construction of the head, and then you've got cartilage here, and you, this is basically like where you want to put your your kind of shadows, you know. So you got let's say light coming in from this direction, so you can kind of go through here and be like, okay, the corners of the mouth are going to be pretty dark. Um, inside here is going to probably be pretty dark. Uh, underneath here is going to be pretty pretty dark, where that kind of skin folds over, and this is the orbit, that socket. Um, here it's probably going to be pretty dark on this side, and let's go ahead and let's go nuts. So the this is going to kind of follow that orbit as well. So on the either side here, you're going to have a little bit of that. Uh, what's this called? Your eyebrow. And then you have a little highlight here for the nose, and then on this side, this is going to be kind of filled in. So you're going to have, and also when you talk about, okay, so here's light direction, and then here's the highlight, and then here's the half tone. It's going to be kind of darkest along here, and then you're going to have the shadow, cast shadow, and it's going to be really dark here, and then it's going to kind of maybe get a little brighter if it's not sunlight. And then uh, also the bounce light is going to cause this half tone to be the darkest because that bounce light from your surface is going to allow a little bit, not quite as dark as a shadow on this side here. And then this will be, uh, boy, look at that shading. Isn't that great? That's amazing. Uh, like that. So <laughs> taking that, uh, you can go through here and then now, you know, put this on the darker side and this on the darker side and you can even indicate like you know possibly where cast shadows go and shadow from the lip and shadow from the upper eyelid and then even highlight from the eye and then shadow from the eyeball here and then all that stuff now taking all of that in consideration and constructing in 2d uh, you get that for free when you go into ZBrush so everything all those the decision we've been making and even stuff as simple as uh, well, what's simple in 3D, such as symmetry and perspective and casting a shadow, it's all just done. So we can actually use this to our advantage in 2D as well as 3D. So if we want to do a little bit of exploration and investigation, ain't nothing stopping us. So we'll go through here and I'm just going to kind of, you know, we're indicating where the orbit of that eye is and that's going to dictate where we kind of have our eye uh, bags hanging out. Um, but we we're also going to talk about possibly using like insert mesh brushes to simplify or at least give us a little bit more control over the eyeball. So again, temporarily, I'm just going to kind of hollow this out and then we're going to go through here and we're going to pop in a couple spheres and we're going to say split mass points and push this back in. Now for certain, I would do this for a stylized object. This character, um, he has style and he has moxie, but he's... Uh, I wouldn't necessarily call them super stylized. We could actually make them hyper real uh, if we wanted to, but we'll say that's about where the eyes are going to go. Uh, interesting thing about the eyeballs is they don't really change that much between people. Um, they, they they tend to stay within like a millimeter from really, really big people, really small people. Eyes don't change that much for adults after you've kind of grown into them. Um, and even when you're a baby, they're big, so they actually kind of stay... Um, the same for a long time. So here we got the eyes, and we got again got that big brow ridge, and you can play around with this brow ridge if you don't want it quite that big, or you want to over crank it and get some cast shadows on here. I'll leave that up to you. But now we have our eyeball now, so let's just call that our eyeball. And if you want to, you can go in here and rename it and say. And then uh, if you want to, also just make quick sure it's uh, mirror and weld. Then we can duplicate this off, and this is where we can get into a little bit of. Um, let's use trim curve. So if we go through here, we're going to take that upper eyelid, we're going to trim that off, we're going to go back to our eyeball, duplicate it off, and we're going to go ahead and trim out um, a lower eyelid, although that's not as important. Um, and now we can use this, so if we go through here, just like we did before, we can go through and we can use the Q mesh polygroup ball, and just hold down shift to kind of pull along those surface normals, because we do need a little bit of thickness. So there's our eyeball, and then here's our upper eyeballs. 
So now we have at least geometry we can push around uh, as opposed to sculpting, which is fine. Uh, but again, excuse me, this might uh, just get over some pretty ridiculous allergies here. I'm getting allergy shots. I thought I was like ahead of the curb and then it just, I got stomped late February. Uh, so here, and we're going to go around here. And then now these, now kind of looking at my reference here, uh, it's kind of got, he's got a droopy eye, which uh, doesn't generally happen. Normally, like if you go straight across, the lower inside is going to be a little lower than the upper outside. And of course, you can make like a cat's eye if you really want to emphasize that. Or um, people, when they draw females, sometimes tend to do that quite a bit. But he actually has a fairly uh, droopy eye where the outside of his eye actually falls. And that kind of, and again, that just kind of speaks to the character a little bit, you know. Um, and he also has very uh, lidded, heavily lidded eyeballs, which I guess we can kind of lean to. Uh, but again, this just gives you a little bit more leeway. And now you can actually take this orbit and really have it overlap, you know, that folds of the skin and that the bone that's underneath there. Um, you can play around with that quite a bit. So we'll go through here. And again, it's going to go through here and we can emphasize a little bit of the nose. So now nose construction, you have some cartilage in here and then you're going to get to these little knobs here. And then um, let me scooch this down. Damien standard, again, go through and cut and then standard brush. And then I'm going to, again, I'm just going to raise this resolution up just a tiny bit as we're moving forward and we're figuring things out. Oh, and one thing when we were talking about the lips, that was, um, so you've got, oops, oops, using, uh, you love when you use ZBrush hotkeys and other programs. So you've got your mouth cylinder here and you got the midline of the face. And then, uh, you know, here's one side of the mouth, and on the other side, it's going to be closer because it's receding in the distance. So, again, it's going to kind of wrap around here. So, if we do the basic mouth, which is going to be, okay, we have a, really? Shift. Shift. Shift doesn't work. Am I crazy? I really am trying to use ZBrush hotkeys in Photoshop. So, here's here's kind of a mouth, uh, and you got the corners of the mouth here. And then if you have upper lip and lower lip, and then, okay, this is going to kind of dip down, this is going to dip down, and then your upper lip is going to kind of, whoa, going to kind of take over, and then your lower lip's going to kind of tuck in. So as if you just kind of follow these rules of, you know, this is your basic, you know, you can maybe break it off into two or three lobes, uh, and then your lower lip, again, just going to tuck in to that upper lip. Essentially, that's all we're really doing in here. We're just doing it in 3D. So again, Damien standard, we're gonna hold down Alt and we're gonna kinda of pull up along here and then we can go into our move. We can kinda of push this down and then uh, push this back and then go in with our clay brush and build this up like so. And then smooth it back. And then we have our upper lip kinda of tucked in our lower lip. Of course, that doesn't mean you can't go in here and have a little bit of fun with, uh, you can go mask pin or mask lasso and go through here and be like, you know what? Let's fuzz that out and let's you know, maybe have he has a pretty severe underbite. Um, nothing wrong with that. Or you can actually go through here and you can pronounce uh, that upper lip, or you can mask the upper lip here, mask pin, and again, control tap to kind of lessen that transition or unharsh that edge here. And then that can kind of be, let's go through here and kind of play around with these shapes a bit. And that'll be that. Now, it looks like on the reference, he does actually have pretty pronounced lips, uh, which is an interesting choice. Uh, a lot of times on males, you would de-emphasize uh, kind of the lusciousness of the of the lips here. But um, on him, they kind of you know, went for it, which is cool. So something like that. Uh, now, we are going to run into a bit of a problem when we say we want to go in here and zero mesh this and that we can create a mouth bag. Now I've got already got a ton of stuff on mouth bag creation on my YouTube channel. Creating a mouth bag is your measure, mouth bag and nostrils creation, and in your mouth bag, etc, etc. Uh, uh, do I want to do that now? Because one thing you can do is just go ahead and start modeling with that mouth bag 
thinking about it, in which case I would go through here and I'd actually start rotating this down. So I would say, you know what, jaw, you are going to have an open mouth. And then maybe even this entire head. And let's do move multiple, control shift drag here. And we're just going to kind of pull, put his head back a bit. And then go out and move multiple. So now if we're modeling with his mouth open, that just might make it a little bit easier for us uh, to create uh, that geometry later on. So that basically just, you, can, you know what? We can go through here and we can say like mask and pull back. And you know, that's fine. Um, but also you can use a live Boolean if you're so inclined. So you go around and then split mass points. And then we can say you are our Boolean. And then for the mouth line, let's go ahead and reset this. Stretch it out, stretch it out. So this can be this. And then we can go through and we can kind of mask. Now this is, this is Dynamesh. So we can go through here and this can be our mouth. And then if we say live Boolean and turn this to subtractive, uh, let's just have these two showing. You can see this is the result we're getting. So we can kind of use this to dictate uh, where this mouth bag is going to end up. And you can actually go into solo mode here and you can say, you know what, let's go ahead and inflate this up. Move this around, control drag to redynamesh. And this is our result. So let's say this is this is fine. It's a good enough start anyway. Uh, and it's, since this is a live boolean, I can do a boolean, but I can also just use it as a preview. So if I know that's what it's going to look like, I can say this is subtractive, this is not, merge down, control drag, and now um, this is our dynamesh result. So now I can go through here. I'm going to inflate this a bit, and inflate this a bit, and we do have a skull sitting out here. So what we could do is. We can say Control Shift, select Lasso, and we can just grab bits of these teeth, or we can just do the opposite. We can say, you know what, Skull and Jaw, um, Control Shift A, which is Visibility Grow All, Delete Hidden, and then now we just have some teeth hanging out. So you can kind of move and scale and rotate these uh, to kind of fit the mouth here, uh, or something like that. So that'll be a that'll be a start, let's say. So now we have a little bit more leeway with the head here, and we can talk a little bit more about this upper lip overlapping that lower lip here. And again, we're just holding down Alt, and we can go into here our trim dynamic, and this will kind of start. And if you want to go crazy with the trim dynamic as well, and just start making planes of the face like this, uh, you can certainly feel free to do that and use that in conjunction with H polish as well. So we'll go ahead and. Let's inflate this up a bit. Now this will help us when we go into zero mesh. Um, cool. <laughs> uh, MC NPC's presentation on the workflow of Disney's Lion King is now on YouTube, which you can check out. And I'm trying to remember. Oh, I did watch that one. And they go into about halfway through. They go into environments as well, so you can see them kind of sculpting the lions and the the baboons. And then um, also getting into environment creation and stuff. And I, I, I was astounded that they didn't use photogrammetry on the rocks. They just went through and hand sculpted everything. Um, that was interesting on those rocks and stuff. <laughs> uh, do you think learning muscle names is essential or does it just come with time? It comes with time, but it's certainly not essential. Some of the people um, that I follow that do the best anatomy are just observational uh, and they just go and they kind of just talk like that too where they're kind of like oh you know oh you know what I guess we don't need these variants in here um, they'll just talk in very general terms like uh, yeah, this this arm here something I mean they'll pull out the basics like oh bicep and tricep and stuff like that but anything beyond that um, they're not really sweating the details as far as technical uh, details but they do but they do know the volumes very well and they do know the forms very well and honestly that's way more important than knowing the names like by a order of magnitude is that how you say it um it's not even comparable like if if you're going to pick one pick knowing the volumes forms and uh rules and shapes um over learning the names 
to the detriment of every uh, of anything else. Now, obviously, when you're learning the names, you're usually learning both at once, so it's not bad to know. It just it, it helps you communicate, especially if you're going to teach. It just gives you um, a little bit more of a common language to kind of pull from, as opposed to having to speak too generally all the time. But at the end of the day, honestly, there's nothing wrong with speaking generally and using general terms that everybody knows and all that stuff. One thing we forgot is we were talking earlier about that hyoid bone. And also you got some meat at the bottom of your neck here. So you don't want to think too much in terms of, oh yeah, we're, we got a jaw bone and then we got uh, neck muscles and you actually have a lot of stuff hanging out. You got your Adam's apple and or the hyoid bone, and those things are going to kind of connect up, and you have um, the meat underneath your chin there. You don't want to... And again, we were, we were playing real fast and loose with these proportions, so his neck is ridiculously long. If we want to fix that again, we can just hit W, move multiple, uh, and then for the body here, let's go ahead and hold down Control shift and uh, we'll unmask, or we'll unmark everything, and then we'll hold down Control. And we'll just mask lasso kind of the neck, and then we'll hold down control and just kind of tap to feather that out a bit. Another thing you can do, you can just back out, and that'll just automatically give you a nice feathered fall off. Uh, so now we're going to invert that, and then we're going to, again, we're going to move multiples. So we're going to hold down control shift, uh, unhatch everything, and we're going to say the head. Actually, you know what? We'll just unhatch everything because now that we've masked, um, And then let's go ahead and reset this so we can literally just move it along that axis. And then from the side, we can just move it from this axis. Um, so there we go. And then hold down Shift, RGB off, Z add, W. Make sure you turn move multiple off. There we go. It looks like this little lower eyelid got away from me. That's okay. Uh, so now what we were talking about as far as like investigating and using 3D as your as your pal, as your um, creation pal, is you can actually just go through here really quickly and then just run, let's, you know, you can always go through here and you can change the light. If you want to go from this side here, I think that can be the light. And this is a little bit much. So I'm going to go in here just for preview purposes. I'm going to go into my render settings real quick, just make some small changes. We're going to go into shadow. Um, global strength, we're going to knock down. Floor strength, we don't need to worry about. We're not really seeing too much of that. And then also, if you want to, you can turn the blur down and then change that angle so that as it gets further away from the light source, it kind of fuzzes out a little bit. And now you're going to see uh, the lights aren't so intense. Uh, you can even add AO. Uh, in this case, it's probably not going to make too much of a difference, especially if you're just going to be drawing over something. Um, but one thing I am noticing is, let's go into move multiple, unhash everything, and then U, U, and U, control shift tap. Let's go ahead and move these in. Those are getting a little bit fish-eyed. Um, but anyway, uh, yeah, so you can do, you know, just kind of playing around and sculpting. You've gone through here and you've done a head and you've used all of the things in 3D that are kind of fun and easy in 3D, which is symmetry and you get automatic perspective and uh, automatic um, shadow direction and stuff like that. And then when you want, if you want to go and draw, uh, you can take what you've gotten for free in 3D and you can use that to supplement or guide your 2D drawings. So we're going to go hold down Alt and let's go ahead and again, we're going to keep, keep cranking this resolution up because now we're getting to the point where um, we're getting into secondary forms here. So here uh, we're going to take this here and then on the corners of the mouth, this is going to come down and then you're going to have uh, like a little node here at the corner of the mouth here where a bunch of stuff attaches. And then again, this lower lip is going to go and attach to that upper lip here. And you can you can delineate this if you want to. We're kind of putting in a line here. Sometimes they have them, sometimes they don't. The reference has it, which, uh, you know what, I'll just roll with that. And then through here, the bottom of the lip. And I'm not, you, I'm not being slavish to the reference. I've actually got a couple different uh, references over here. I'm kind of looking back and forth. Um, I'm not doing a re-sculpt or anything like that. I'm just kind of using it. And honestly, like I can even go through here and just grab some more general stuff. Like, that's oh, another really cool one. This is a cool one. So like when you start getting into really tertiary, tertiary detail or poor detail and like wrinkle direction, this is another good one, you know? kind of go through here and you can use this to kind of guide and again keep you honest. So that would be like our lower eye bag lower lid here. Oops. 
and looks like it went a little bit crazy. I'm going to do a quick mirror and weld. And you know what? Just to play it safe. Quick save. And you know what? Just Because when we do a quick save, that's an entire project. I don't need all this anymore, so I'm going to set delete all. And now when I do a quick save, it should save faster. And then we go in here to our quick saves, and we'll just reload from our last. So this is all recovered. And then quick save. Boy, that scares me. Also, let's just do this. Save as. Streaming. Gauntly. There we go. But you can also, um, we should just be able to reload from this last quick save here. And this will have all the stuff that we need. All right, let's turn our perspective real quick. Uh, and again, we'll go through and we'll fix this. And we want to make sure that this is giving us enough room to go through here and just kind of go back to the corners of the eyes here. And that's where, you know, this can kind of come into play. And we're starting to get possibly a little too much resolution. And then there's the eye bags, but it's also going to kind of phase into the eye bags we already have going. So again, when we, we finally get to the point where we integrate these lilids, li lilids uh, these will kind of be sunken into each other. But I'm really using these to kind of frame the eyeball and make sure we have eyelid thickness. And then also, the upper eyelid is probably going to overlap that over eye, lower eyelid, just like the, the mouth here. So that just gives us this result here. Um, these brows we can probably drop considerably. Here and then uh, again, we did have some big bushy eyebrows, and not most of the reference I'm seeing doesn't have big bushy eyebrows, and that's okay. We can we can actually just use that as a separate mesh, and we'll actually go through, actually actually, uh, go through and do a bunch of uh, exploration on that front. But if you want to put in like an indication of that, you can go in here with your clay buildup, and you can say be like, okay, here's here's a, the general direction of where those uh, are going to go, and then here, and then clay brush here. And then uh, again, how deep or how pronounced you want some of this stuff is kind of up to you, but we'll go ahead and we can kind of maybe mask pin this here. And then we can go through and you just kind of pull. You know, actually, there's actually gravity in some in the brush settings somewhere. Um, brush samples. Hmm. Hmm. Modifiers. Hmm, where is it? It's been a while. Um, somewhere in ZBrush is, it wouldn't be under picker, would it? Because that's just orientation. Gravity, constant sample on surface. If I was ZBrush, where would I put gravity? Strength multipliers for IMM brushes. Template pressure. Depth. Gravity strength, under depth. So you can turn on gravity strength, so as I'm sculpting with my standard brush, it's going to kind of pull in the direction that you have this arrow, so you can go through and you can... Oh, I thought you could... Wait. Standard brush. Oh, gravity is always pointing down, so I suppose if you flipped your object upside down... Oh, strength is zero. Nope. It's always going to be in that world direction. So you can see it's going to kind of... Well, no, it does. So gravity here. You can see as you're sculpting, it's pulling in the direction of gravity and then pulling in the direction of gravity. Uh, of course, you don't have to do this 100. You can just do a little bit lighter. Uh, but if that's interesting to you, by all means, uh, I'm going to go through here. And again, we're just going to pull these folds down a bit. Now, part of the problem, too, is and why I'm so interested in kind of getting to a zero mesh solution is we are going to lose a lot of the cool folding that can happen. Like when I go through here and zero mesh this, or when I dynamesh this together, we're going to lose a lot of this really undercut, nice folding that's happening. Uh, we can get it back, um, but just be aware that, that that also helps the believability and the... Um, and also this too, like we can go in here and we do this and then we really want to kind of tuck that lower lip into our upper lip. Um, 
I would maybe do that after zero meshing. So maybe kind of leave these corners open a bit, and then when we zero mesh, we'll get that geometry, and then we can really go and push and pull that geometry around. So let's get to that. Um, but I keep talking about it. So if you wanted to go through here and like, okay, print screen, just grab, use green shot if you want, or sniping tool, um, go through here and we can just, oops, I can paste this. So earlier we did just a straight up drawing, just, you know, basic construction uh, drawing here. And then now that we have a head we can use, we can use this as our guide. And so we can go through here and you know what? There we go. And let's harshen that up a bit. Yeah, something like that. So now when we go through here, again, you, you can still use basic construction or if you need to find the midline, uh, but at least now you have a concrete face here that has, you know, a draft and a midline here. And then you can go through here and you can kind of explore, you know, different ideas. So if you wanted to kind of play around with, again, you know, here's the, the corners of the mouth are going to be dark and, you know, the direction of the lights actually come in this way. So in this case, we can darken up this side here. And, you know, if you wanted to play around with the eyebrows on this guy or maybe a weird hairline, uh, I shouldn't say weird hairline, there's nothing weird about that hairline, but here and then maybe corners of the eyes here. And you know what, we can actually let's have his eyes go a little bit wonk-eyed here. And uh, pronounce these eye bags here, and we've got again the gaunt cheekbones. And this, this is actually, I'm noticing that this cheekbone swoop is actually missing uh, probably a little bit of a, a corner there. And then again, here's the orbit coming back through, and then you can go through and you can put some wrinkles on there, and if you want to play around with this nose or how it integrates to the face, or if you want to, you know what, let's see if we could do a little mustache, a little kind of a John Waters-esque here. And then uh, he's got his mouth open a little bit, which is fine. chin here and then uh, you know what let's also do like a little uh what's that called soul patch it's so already and again you're just using what you already have in 3d i don't know why it keeps doing that um to kind of guide and allow you um just just like kind of an underlying uh structure that you kind of get for free. And then you can go through here and, you know, make make whatever character you want. Like so. Something like that. Um, let's see. Why didn't you use extract for the eyelids? Uh, it's too sloppy. Um, if you know you can go in here but you're going to be playing around a lot with okay let me mask this or am i going to slice it off and i'm going to extract and i'm going to go play with thicknesses and it's going to kind of bulge out and you can do t corners to kind of keep those constrained but honestly i rarely use extract there's there's very rare instances it just doesn't give me even when i'm doing like quick sloppy armor creation I rarely use extract. Um, not to say you can't, and that's just more of a personal preference for me. Uh, it just becomes extract is just too sloppy for me. Uh, I can usually Z mesh and um, get the result I want with Z modeler, or I can go through and I can just mask and transpose to get what I need out of it, as opposed to fiddling with extraction. Uh, it's nice though, and using extraction in conjunction with other things like groups, loops, and panel loops and stuff is certainly cool. And a lot of people really like extract is a, like a fundamental part of how they work in ZBrush. Um, so again, I'm not telling you don't, I'm just telling you my personal preference is um, I'm not a, I'm not a big extractor here. So again, we're just kind of going to go through and oh yeah, we were going to talk about Z remeshing this, uh, but I'm going to catch up on these questions here. Um, and if I miss any, I apologize. I'm getting uh, a little bit behind here. 
uh, duplicated the apples, yes, and then uh, sliced, or well, we did a trim. So it just basically the difference between slice and trim is trim will go through and slice, delete what was behind the gradient, and then fill hole. No problem. Thanks for showing up, everybody. Hello from Spain. Yes. Origins and insertions. Uh, that's another thing, too, is um, you know, learning those is kind of comes along with the form and uh, functionality of stuff. Uh, this is the corner I was talking about here. I think that probably a little bit more bone underneath there, and then this is kind of uh, skin and fat. and Not a huge amount of muscle in the face, uh, but certainly enough to kind of push and pull your head around here. Um, let me see this filtrum. We can kind of tone down this filtrum a bit, I think. I don't know that it needs to be that deep or pronounced. And then uh, for the nose here, this kind of curls up here, and then these also kind of go through. So now we're getting into um, it's really, really deeper into the secondary forms. So that would probably be my, where I stop and uh, go ahead and zero mesh. If as long as I'm not doing anything crazier, and we can always we can zero mesh as many times as we want to, but as long as I'm not doing stuff like, um, you know, this kind of thing, uh, and really stressing the geometry, then zero meshing at this point should be fine. But we also got to get that body up to a certain point too. So when I merge these down, um, I'm fine. And honestly, you know, I'm not going to stress too much about the body here. We can go through and we can do some, oops, um, ancillary detail, kind of surface undulations, but really I just basically go through here and you can kind of smooth it out. Um, this upper peck's pretty pronounced. And the peck too is something to consider is uh, it just kind of sits on top of that rib cage. So a lot of times you'll see when people do pecs, their, their default, and I, it might come from reference too, is they'll be like, hasta la vista, baby. Uh, and really, pecs are pretty thin. Uh, with bodybuilder pecs, maybe not, but as Joe Schmo and certainly emaciated guys like this um, aren't going to have massive, heavy muscular musculature here. Um, also, this he's he's very lean. Um, this guy, so you're going to see a lot of. You could go through here and do a lot of pec separation, like uh, get some get your Bruce Lee reference out and just go through here, and uh, you can actually like see, you know, this these striations of the the pecs kind of sitting uh, next to that sternum. So you can go through here and you can kind of put in, you know, the muscle direction, kind of as a, as a start. Um, and again, these these this portion comes down this way, and then these go across, and then they, and these start going up. So as long as you know the striation directions, uh, as you go through here and you start adding your details, it'll at least be in the right direction, and it'll read. Even if you put them in the wrong direction, um, the people who are looking at it might be like, you know what, that looks weird. I don't know why it looks weird to me. It just kind of reads off. Uh, and it could be something as simple as that. So I'm going to drop my smooth intensity down. And then this, you always got to think, like, okay, it's not just muscles sitting there. You're going to have a little bit of skin and fat. Uh, and also on the male, what's going to cause that um, that corner of the pec a lot of times is going to be a fat deposit right here. Um, that's what's going to kind of square out that pec. On him, he's, he's very emaciated, so uh, maybe not so much. But um, also in the notch of the neck here, we can kind of make that a little bit more, we can kind of give him a little bit more of a clavicle here, and then an attachment point um, for his mastoid. Now he does have a platysma there, but just like the um, the latissimus dorsi, it's, uh, it's it's kind of a thin muscle that's being more, its shape is more dictated by the underlying muscles more so than the actual lats here. And then even underneath here, you're going to have some spinal erectors that kind of give you uh, two little tubes back here. All that good stuff. So anyway, uh, we got this to a good enough point, I suppose. And you also have two heads coming off of here. You got one that goes to the clavicle and then one that goes to the sternum. So this clavicle one will kind of fan that out just a bit. And you got some muscles in here as well. And then you got your traps that are going to go up to that occipital protuberance. So this is actually, and that needs to be, that little bump on the back of the skull here is where 
those are going to end up. And then this is going to end up on that corner here, but we can we can kind of fuzz that out. And I'm just holding down Alt and tapping to go between subtools. So I'm not having a hunt over here. Um, let's play around with this cranium here. Yeah, that's that's a bit much probably. And then yeah, I guess that'll work. So at this point, uh, we'll take our head and drop that onto our body, and then Dynamesh this, and now our body has inherited the Dynamesh resolution of our head, in this case, which is fine. And we'll go through here, and now we're getting into like secondary details, and this is where I'm going to start uh, probably Ziri meshing this result, so we can go through there and just murder it with all the little fine, fine noodly stuff. But as long as our basic forms here, and again, I'm keeping these corners of the mouth and these overhangs, I'm not going to push those too hard just yet because we are going to be zero meshing those. Uh, let's go ahead and integrate those eyelids. So we'll take this and we got uh, eyeball here. Now we're going to take this body and we're going to move this to the top. Uh, or above the eyelids at least, and we're going to, well, let's do this. Let's smooth these out first. So here, I'm going to go through here, and we're going to do underneath geometry crease. We're going to crease polygroup. Then we're going to turn on dynamic, and that'll go ahead and give us a preview of what it would look like dynamically subdivided. Uh, we can hit apply to make that real geometry, and then same thing. Crease polygroup, turn on dynamic, make sure it's working-ish. Say apply, and then now go through and move these as needed. Uh, and I'm, I like the kind of overcrank thickness. Now, if you're going to 3D print this, um, I would say really over, especially when you're printing to scale, like one eighth scale or something like that, you're going to want to, and when you get into fine surface detail, like um, jean textures or fabric cloth textures, you're really going to want to make those larger than life and then also deeper than, than you would uh, want to just to make it really read from scale. 3D printed, cleaned up, you're going to lose some resolution and detail and stuff. So if you over crank it, um, you can buy some of that back. Um, just food for thought. Same thing with eyelid distance and stuff. If you think in 1 8 scale, you know, making sure that everything reads as needed. So uh, anyway, we got the body here, we got the eyelids. So I'm going to go ahead and merge these down. Control drag, and now these are all dynamesh together. Let's raise that resolution. You know what? Before we do that, Let's raise that resolution up just a tiny bit. There we go. And now we can integrate these eyelids. And now this isn't going to be a pronounced curve through here. So we'll go ahead and just, this will kind of be our eyelid shape here. And then go in with our Damien standard. And we can kind of start giving some indications too. And this is getting into more detail than I'm, than I would bother with, honestly, but if you are going to go continue forward and not go into zero mesher, you can do that, but I would suggest zero meshing. So we got our body here, and he's kind of weird looking, but that's okay. So I'm not going to make any major changes, so we'll go ahead and talk about zero mesh. Um, in the old days, in the olden days, back before 2020, you would have to duplicate this off and project. We can just use our history uh, in this case. I'm going to do a quick save, and then we'll just reload. And I'll get caught up here. Cool. Uh, in our university, they made us learn anatomy muscle from medical university books. Uh, we had an autopsy class with teacher showed us corpse and taught us to uh, the muscles and the anatomic connections. And that's a really good too if you have um, access to that. You don't have to rely on the digital version of going through and being like, getting your bone saw out and your uh, scalpels and stuff. Um, Another really good resource, ah, you know, I'm not going to pull it up because it's got severe nudity. Uh, it's anatomical nudity, but I know YouTube gets weird about that. But um, 1024 has some anatomy stuff you can do. I'm trying to look and see where it is. It's like Anatomy 360, and it'll give you actual human beings that are scan data in different poses, and you can move them around and rotate them up and down and side to side and move the lighting around and turn the textures off and on so you can focus more on value and stuff like that. Um, that's a really good resource as well. Cool. Uh, my characters always look mental. Mine too. Uh, you and me both. Uh, so we're going to go through here. And so like we said before, we can just use our history as uh, what we're going to project back to. So all we need to do is we'll go ahead and zero mesh this. Now let's go ahead and break up, break this up just a little bit here. So we're going to go into solo mode here and we'll turn off 
we're going to keep polyframe on. We're going to turn off the line so we can see a little bit better. And we'll also switch over to like a matte cap. Skin shader 4, not a matte cap. And then we can go through here. And now you can see with when it's not a matte cap, you're actually, your light can, can dictate. So this is actually a good good thing to happen to get into as well as going through here and changing your lighting condition as you sculpt. Can I make sure that this will kind of point out some flaws in your reasoning? But anyway, um, let's go through here. And very quickly, I'm going to hold down control, mask pin, and we'll say U. We're just going to put in some control where zero mesher is going to end up. So I want to have a loop around this eyelid here. And you could use curves for this, but boy, it's just a lot easier and also more visual to go through here and do polygroups. Uh, one thing you can do, and I, this, I'm doing this on the high res, so it will be baked in, quote unquote, to your zero meshed object, but I'm not too concerned about that, is you can actually go through here and, oops, why don't you put a, a, a line through there, you can go through their geometry and then you can use edge loop and then edge loop mask border, which will slice a curve through here. And you can even go through here and you can say, you know what, let me go ahead and mask out this border and you can even grow it and invert it. And then you can go through here and you can say polish by features and you can just smooth that out and that'll actually smooth that line. Now, when you go to zero mesh, there's an option to smooth your polygroups and that's what I would do. But in case you needed that, um, that's an option for you. Uh, so here and then through here, We'll try and put a loop around the nostril here. Good enough. And again, we'll just do a quick um, edge loop mask border hotkey for that is Control Shift E. We'll use it. Control Shift E. And then certainly around the lips. Now this is probably going to be one of the more important ones. Um, not important in such that we're trying to be like, hey, can you make an animatable mesh out of this? Uh, absolutely you can. Uh, is it going to get you a job uh, being the topology wizard for uh, a production? No. Is it going to get the job done for what we need? Absolutely. Uh, and in fact, if you go and watch the what they linked earlier, the Lion King, making of Lion King, they, they talk a little bit about like, oh, can you use Ziri Mesh for production? Of course you can. And you can actually use Ziri Mesh and you can clean it up. Uh, you don't have to use it wholesale. Um, but if you just need something quick to preview, there's nothing wrong with it. Now, obviously topology purists and stuff are going to want to know exactly where these loops are. And in this case, what I would do is I would have a human base mesh that I would use Z-Wrap, or I would use Wrap 3 or whatever version of the wrap you want to use and just go through here and plot points. And then I would take a perfect mesh geometry and snap it to my high-risk sculpt. And you can do that for scan data as well. So you don't have to worry about creating perfect topology every time. You have perfect topology and then you just snap it to the face because a human face doesn't change all that much. Even something as stylized as this, I can take a skin data retopologized beautiful mesh and snap it to here and I would be probably 100% done. I'm not even going to say like, oh, you know, you might might not be all the way done. Yeah, probably you would be. Uh, let's go ahead and do an auto group so we can separate out um, that mouth bag here. So we have, we're just making polygroups. Uh, through here. So I can now go ahead and isolate this if I want to, or I can go through here with brush. Let's close some of these down. I don't need all this open. Uh, auto masking. Now I mask my polygroups up to 100, so when I'm going through here and masking, I can just mask around the polygroups and I don't have to um, go into them. So I'm going to say, you know what, let's put another ring around this eyeball here. And actually, now that I think about it, if you go to ZBrush for illustrators. Um, ZBrush for illustrators.com. Used to go to a website, but um, Steve James has um, kind of this workflow as well. So I can link you to ZBrush for illustrators playlists. It's on their ZBrush's YouTube playlist here. And you can kind of use those loops. Um, so we have, we already kind of have that. We have edge loops, uh, mass border. And so, yeah, let's do Control Shift E. And then again, uh, with mass by polygroups up to 100, we can go through here and we've already done the lips. Um, we can do the nose, it looks like. So we can go through here and we can mask out. Uh, you know what, do we want to put, let's go all the way around. And this is maybe even overkill for what you would need. Um, I'll leave it up to you, but uh, so we got this, and then we're going to put a loop 
you could just zero mesh. You don't have to go through all of this. But if it's useful, why not? And then this is going to go around here. And this will make it easier if you do want to do uh, my ZBrush for concept and ideation, I think it's called. Um, we actually do this type of thing so that we can do layers and uh, do poses and blend shapes and stuff. Just make it a little bit easier. Uh, okay, we'll do we'll call that a day. And we are getting some stray groups. We can fix that in a second. And I guess the rest of the head, oh, and then through here. So we'll say you are Give him that, that superhero Robin mask here. Okay, let's say that's good enough for government work. So now through here, let's go ahead. I'm going to hold down Control Shift. I'm just going to tap between those two polygroups here and make sure that these are relatively clean. Because the remesher will try and integrate. It's only going to do what you tell it to do. So if you're telling it to do something, um, be prepared to have it do it. And when I was doing edge loop mask border, I was that's where I was kind of, um, let's do this, let's do an auto groups on this one, let's do a quick mirror and weld, and oh, well that fixed that nicely. Uh, let's turn off LSIM, so making sure we're getting our midline mirror and weld, and then through here, clean up. Oh, it didn't fix that, it just made it um, not as noticeable. So here, control W, here, and then this can be grouped, control W. Anything around the nostril. All right, I think we're in good shape. So uh, we've done all of that work and this is gonna be essentially be our high res that we're gonna project back to. So let's go back to our startup material so we can see this a little bit better once we zero mesh. Or you know what, I think we're gonna have our lines on so I think we'll be okay. So anyway, we have this here and what we're gonna do is we're gonna zero mesh this. We have X symmetry turned on. So we're gonna go into our zero mesh options and we'll go ahead and stick with the defaults for now. Although we are, let's turn the adaptive size down a bit. Not, not all the way down to zero for even quads, but maybe like 13. Uh, we're going to say keep groups, smooth groups at one. So they'll go ahead and smooth our groups for us and uh, maybe give us a little bit more of a natural result. And then, you know what else we probably should do? Let's do this. Control Shift, Slice. We'll make that a poly group. And uh, we can make... This a poly group. Now slice is only going to happen on one axis, so you are going to have to go through here and do a, a mirror, mirror and weld. Um, and actually, we can do better than that. So let's take this poly group here. Let's go ahead and mask this. Hit Control W, and then we're going to take both of these. Hit Control W. And uh, the ears, I'm just going to leave alone. Now you can go through here when you are zero meshing. You can go through, and this is using like quad mesher. Um, I'll have a Houdini playlist that kind of goes through like an automated version of Zero Mesher. Uh, but for now, uh, it's got great functionality. So Z ZBrush right now, I think, has the best quad mesher functionality in the industry, bar none. It's all built in. It works consistently. Uh, I think it's a really good solution. So Zero Mesher for the win, uh, as far as I'm concerned. So we have our high res here. We have it all looped up. And we're going to go through here. And again, a death size down. We're not going to do half. We're going to give it a target. And we'll go ahead and say maybe, um, oops, uh, 10, 10 K for now and smooth our groups, keep groups on and we'll hit zero mesh and we do have X symmetry turned on and that's important. It'll, um, number one, it will work a lot faster. Number two, it's symmetrical. So why not? And keep going, keep going, keep going. Ta-da. Perfect geometry. Now, perfect. Maybe not good enough. Absolutely. So we have our new geometry here, and now we need to get our details back. Um, now you could keep going through here and you can hit half, or you could put edge loops around the ear to make that resolve a little bit better. I'm not really overly concerned about that. You could paint in um, 
you go in here and you can say use poly paint. You can paint color density. So if you want less dense in the back of the head, more dense on the front of the face, go for it. Um, this isn't, I'm not overly thrilled about this. You know what, let's do this. Let's say instead of 10, let's say 14,000. Sometimes just throwing more geometry is the problem. Uh, you can also hold down Alt and hit zero measure. That'll give you a different algorithm. Uh, so if you're having like midline problems, you're trying to do a game res-ish start um, and you're getting some weird issues down the midline of your geometry, you can hold down Alt and get a different um, result. Uh, now through here, uh, it's not terrible. And you can actually go through here as Z modeler if you wanted to, and you could clean this up a little bit. We could say like collapse these edges through here maybe. And then uh, you can hold down shift and you can go through and you can slice this. So let's go through here and say, you know what? Um, we're gonna go ahead and split all the way down to this edge here. And then we'll say bridge two points, and we'll say you go to oops, you go to you, you go to you, you you, and now we can go through here, and we can say delete edge. Now you could also throw this into Z spheres. You could just clone it off and grab a Z sphere. I think I could just slide this. Uh, there might be a limit to how much you can pull into a Z sphere, uh, but that should be fine. And this is. You know, this is good enough-ish. Let's see if we can't. I don't want to get too nitpicky here. Oh, you know what? And part of the problem is um, is my fault, which is having crappy geometry or having zero measure seeing um, some loose poly groups that I made. Um, so again, not zero measure's fault. It's more my fault for being sloppy. Uh, but let's go ahead and fix these. Let's say bridge two points here to here, and then collapse. Bada bing, bada boom. All right, so we have our new geometry, and we have history that has our uh, high res here. So let's go back to our starter material, and we're going to say, here's our high res geo. So we're going to control tap this, and we're going to go all the way forward, and this is our new geometry. So we're going to go in here to Go in here to what? Oh, um, if you want more information on this, again, uh, it's on my YouTube channel under playlist, but also any of the what's new stuff is in here. And Zebras 2020 especially has a lot of, like normally it's like, oh, Zebras 2019, what's new? Here's 48 videos on what's new. And then here's some uh, picture examples. So that's easy enough to go to the YouTube playlist. Zebras 2020, uh, I have a what's new. It's 41 videos on what's new in Zebras 2020. This is part of that. And then also have like a time lapse here you can watch. This a little V-Ray render. Um, little This guy took about four hours start to finish just to kind of create and then, you know, unwrap him and throw him into V-Ray and do little particles and stuff like this. So it was about four and a half hours to finish, about half a day. And then here's new features live stream, new feature part two live stream, and then some pretty pictures. So this one's a little bit more complicated. So if you want more on that, new features, check that out. So anyway, uh, we got new geometry, and we have um, details control tapped here. And then we have underneath uh, in Zebra 2020, we now have the ability to go over here to project, and we have project history. We haven't done any color yet, um, which is fine. You could also project color, but we're just going to do geometry. So we're going to say project history, and that's going to project our details back. So now as we hit control D to subdivide, we can go in here to project history, and it's going to go and project from that history point to give us back our details. So I'm just subdividing and projecting. So we are gonna have subdivision history and our details back. So now here's our subdivision level one, which we can go through and we can UV this and we can do blend shapes and stuff. And then here's subdivision level um, four. And now when we go through and start sculpting, we don't have to worry about Dynamesh anymore. Uh, and let's also, let's take this one, let's hit D for dynamic. Smooth those out a little bit. So, uh, for example, when I was talking about, you know, the lips and working with those correctly, we can go to Soto's level one, and now we can very easily go through here, and let's turn off mass by polygroups down to zero. Um, we can go through here, and we can mask this upper part, and then this lower part, we can go through, and we can actually manipulate and move the geometry as needed, get those nice overhangs um, from our eyelids here. So we can go through here, and you know what we can also do? We can say, we mask this edge, uh, oh, it's free. Yeah, you can you can free subdivision levels. I'm not going to bother doing that. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to isolate this, and we're going to mask our border, invert that, and now I can go through here, and I can literally just kind of go through, and I can pull up 
here and then control tap to invert that mask and can pull this down. So now we're getting nice uh, overlap deep geometry. Now you do need to kind of maybe be careful if you're going to be shooting displacement maps that may not, uh, you might run into some issues there from projection errors and stuff like that, but just for kind of working as we're working here, uh, this makes it a lot nicer to go through. And number one, it's a nicer surface to sculpt on because it's nice and quadded. And number two, just the ability to go through there and get those overlaps like this overlap here. So again, mask this out like so. Invert that and then really just kind of pull this geometry. And we're not, we're not stressing the geometry. We're not making it... Um, we're not causing it to have a whole bunch of errors or anything, uh, or stressing it to the point where we need to rebuild the geometry because the, it's going to start sculpting weird. Um, but just basically going through and um, I guess they're using a clay brush and stuff and getting those overlaps on the face there. So here and here, sculpt it out. And uh, again, you can go through here with you go through here in your pinch. And uh, you can start, even even this type of stuff isn't going to stress the geo too much if you want to just kind of go through and kind of start touching these things and playing around with proportions and stuff. That ear, that ear did get a little bit hairy. You could put loops around the ear and maybe help that out a little bit. But it's such a, as long as the ear forms are okay, it's not going to be deforming that much. So you should be, you should be all right. So I can go through here. And again, we're just going to, And if you're just going through and you're having fun and you're not doing a live stream where you're, I mean, not that live streaming isn't fun. I'm having a, a tremendous amount of fun. Uh, but if you were just kind of going through and sculpting, this type of thing, all this process that I've been doing, maybe take you 40 minutes, you know, start to finish, as opposed to two hours of me just kind of rambling and doing, you know, weird uh, tangents and stuff like that and talking about what I'm doing. You can just go through and execute. Um, you can very quickly... Uh, go through and do what you need to do. And then, of course, we have subdivision history, so we can keep going up and up and up and up and up. And I'm going to go ahead and hold down Shift to smooth this out a little bit. And now we can start getting into, um, again, going into that Damien standard and really kind of pushing and pulling, going with your clay brush, your clay buildup, and start pushing and pulling these forms around. And you see the geometry reacts just so much nicer. And it allows you, and again, you can hold down Alt if you want to really, like, find the the um, the volumes here a little bit more, and then standard brush, kind of curve these in a little bit more. And now we're getting into maybe a, maybe a little too much detail. But another thing you can do is with your Damien standard, you can just go through and you can kind of start again those those delineation lines that are in the reference here. Um, you can hold down Alt. You can kind of pull up and then pull in and then clay brush, go through here. And you can actually isolate this if it's a little bit too much uh, noise going on or stuff's in your way. Just go through here and isolate it because you have polygroups now. Very, very easy. And then go through here and start maybe building up these lips a little bit like so. And then uh, here and here. And then also like where, where folds naturally would happen or in the brow, for example, you know, the skin folds go through here and really kind of push that a bit. And then uh, wrinkles on the forehead, maybe you can start indicating those a bit. And these are almost still secondary forms, you know, depending on how deep they are and stuff. We're not talking about like poor detail or anything like that yet. Uh, and then this is going to kind of swoop again, swoop, swoop one, swoop two, helix swoop. Have a good day. Okay, good. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I'm almost done. I didn't realize it was at 8 o'clock already. Aaron's going to work and the dogs are fed, everybody. So I don't have to do that. Uh, but anyway, I'll go ahead and wrap it up. You guys, you guys see where this is going, right? Basically, at this point, you're just going to go through and um, 
start detailing up, have some fun. And and also the other cool thing too is when you start doing blend shapes, it's going to be a lot easier. You can drop down to level one. And uh, let me see if I have an example. Um, so you can see it real quick. Oh, actually, you know what? If you go in here to blend shape. Yeah. ZBrush Maya blend shapes plugin. I go through and there's a little 10 minute video on this is actually from the ZBrush Summit 2018. So if you look for my art station page, this one has a ton of stuff in it. So here's the uh, ZBrush Summit uh, videos I did after the summit. Here's the ZBrush Summit that you can watch where I went through it. And then here's the um, here's the cinematic video. So this is the blend shapes that I created for this lady right here. Um, and again, just it, it was just a handful of people kind of doing this in Unreal. Um, so it was kind of quick and dirty work, but creating the blend shapes uh, in ZBrush pretty easy. Like, you know, just kind of going through and doing the basic blend shapes for that type of stuff is all right there in ZBrush Maya blend shapes. And also if you want to do multiple blend shapes or mirror your blend shapes and stuff like that, it's all in there. As well as, I'm trying to think, I want to say in here, you can see an example in the ideation series. Yeah, there we go. So as you're doing blend shapes in here, you can go through and you can do, um, you know, as you're as you're furrowing your brow, this is going to happen. So you can go through and you can dial in uh, different expressions for your character. And it, you know, it's all fairly simple. And that way, you're not just stuck with, okay, here's my A pose guy for my uh, art station page or whatever. You can go through and um, you can do different expressions very quickly and all that good stuff. But anyway. That was fun. Hope you guys had fun uh, watching me ramble. Um, let's see. Can you show this new way of doing all the project? My English is very beginner. Yeah, actually, go to Zebras 2020 What's New. And in here, video, history recall brush with color, history recall versus morph recall, recall versus project brush. Um, it should be in here. I'll link you to that. And then also just in here, it might be easier just to go to my YouTube channel and say, or you can just Google it, but in here, I just know for certain it's in here. There it is, project history. There's the individual video where it goes through and we have the lower res one and then we, it's exactly what I did here. And you can actually use Sculptures Pro to dial in, uh, bring back what you want. Uh, which is kind of interesting too. Cool. All right. Thanks, everybody. I'm going to head out. Um, and so, if you want to see this uh, backed up, uh, it's always going to be, I'm always going to have it on my YouTube channel as well. So, if you go to my YouTube channel and you go to the live stream playlist, live stream full episodes, uh, it'll be in there, as well as um, if I go over here to my Pavlovich workshop for ZBrush. This is where my stuff is archived in this playlist as well. So if you want to go through my ZBrush ones I do on Tuesdays, it's all here and on my YouTube channel. And then my Thursday one's going to be on my YouTube channel uh, when I stream on Twitch and YouTube and all that good stuff. Facebook, maybe. Um, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But it's all here. So here's the workshop. And here's the, here's the other backup and other new stuff that I end up dropping. So keep you up to date-ish. Cool. Thanks, everybody. And I will catch you on Thursday.